Thank you for taking the time to watch my short presentation. My name is Melanie Mason, and I will be discussing my research on exercise and the closed loop control system for adolescent athletes with type 1 diabetes. For the athlete with type 1 diabetes, exercise can cause fluctuations in blood glucose levels. The maintenance of blood glucose in the ideal range, which is generally considered to be between 70 and 180, can be challenging. The objective of this critically appraised topic was to determine the effectiveness of the closed loop control system versus the open loop control system in keeping blood glucose levels in the ideal range with exercise. The open loop control system involves an insulin pump that is controlled by the individual with diabetes. A continuous glucose monitor can also be used, but the individual must still make the adjustments to the amount of insulin administered. A closed loop control system, also known as an artificial pancreas, involves an insulin pump with a continuous glucose monitor that sends blood glucose readings to the pump, with the pump then adjusting insulin levels based on the blood glucose level. Human error is minimized with the closed loop control system. My focus clinical question for this research was, in adolescents with type 1 diabetes who participate in exercise, does a closed loop control system versus a conventional insulin delivery system increase blood glucose time in the ideal range? After carefully examining the current research, I found two main conclusions. First, with exercise, the closed loop control system keeps blood glucose levels in the ideal range for a higher percentage of time than a closed loop system. Second, for athletes with type 1 diabetes, being in the ideal range for longer periods of time positively impacts training and competition. By using the closed loop control system, which keeps blood glucose levels in the ideal range for longer periods of time, athletes with type 1 diabetes can continue to train and compete without interruption due to dangerous fluctuations in blood glucose levels. In addition, working in an ideal blood glucose range helps their body function more efficiently. High blood glucose levels change energy and protein metabolism during exercise. When blood glucose levels are high, energy expenditure is increased for the same workload. In other words, when blood glucose is high, the athlete must expend much more energy to get the same result as their counterparts who have ideal blood glucose levels. This can have an adverse effect on both training and competition. Keeping blood glucose levels in the ideal range positively affects the athlete with type 1 diabetes. In conclusion, as athletic trainers, we are responsible for the day-to-day -day health and well-being of our athletes. This evidence-based re research should guide us in educating our athletes with type 1 diabetes. We can help them make educated decisions on the closed loop control system for the management of type 1 diabetes. Decision on treatment of each individual should involve all members of the healthcare team, including the athlete, the athlete's family, the athletic trainer, and the athlete's endocrinologist. All treatments should be on an individual basis. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at the email listed. I would also appreciate any comments or feedback you have. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this.